you guys like to come through to see all the TV's review? <laughs> Oh, look. That's why the Is that what they're doing? So, uh, here we go. This is right. Samsung. Samsung. Oh, yes! Oh, 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 wait, what's that? Uh, LG. Yeah. Got that right. Uh, okay. Nice. 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 It's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, we've put four of the world's best 4K TVs in a room, calibrated them, and masked up all the bezels and speakers to hide the design of each TV. I then asked a panel of 9 video professionals from British TV and film production company Fullwell73, including colorists, editors and post engineers, to watch a ton of content on these televisions and score them from 1 to 5 in different categories without knowing which TV is which. Using a $30,000 dual-layer LCD mastering monitor as reference, we aim to find the best TV of 2022 in an unbiased manner, mainly in terms of picture quality. In alphabetical order, the four TVs competing in this year's shootout were the LG G2 with Brightness Booster Max technology, the Panasonic LZ2000 with Master OLED Pro panel, the Samsung S95B QD OLED, and the Sony A95K Master Series TV, also using a QD OLED panel. The first category judged was black level and shadow detail. The judges were asked to watch two scenes in HDR. The first one was this sequence from the 4K Blu-ray of The Darkest Hour, and the second one was the snippet from The Dark Knight Rises, again on 4K Blu-ray. The first place in this category went to the Panasonic LZ2000 with 3.61 points, because the TV consistently matched the dual-layer LCD mastering monitor closest in terms of black level and shadow detail across both scenes. Meanwhile, the Sony A95K took second place with 3.39 points. Its near-black presentation looked slightly brighter than that on the mastering monitor, but still managed to beat the Samsung S95B which tended to crush some shadow detail however slightly, and the LG G2 which manifested more deterring noise in these dark scenes compared to other TVs in the shootout. To judge color accuracy, several different video clips were used, ranging from the same low-luminance one from The Darkest Hour, to this regular APL sequence from the 4K Blu-ray of Kingsman, where there were various shades of skin tones and clothings for the judges to compare colors against the mastering monitor, and finally, this high APL scene from Mad Max Fury Road. Just like last year, I also included out-of-the-box color accuracy in the scores. Basically, what I did was that after all the voting for all the categories had been completed, I reset the TVs to out-of-the-box filmmaker mode, and custom mode on the Sony A95K QD OLED since it doesn't have filmmaker mode and asked the judging panel to re-watch the same HDR scene from Kingsman with reference to the mastering monitor. After the scores were averaged for both calibrated and uncalibrated color accuracy, the Panasonic LZ2000 was the winner in this category with 3.61 points, followed by the Sony A95K with 3.47 points. The next category was HDR performance, taking into account tone mapping for not only 1000 nit but also 4000 nit HDR content, as well as overall HDR brightness and impact. In first place was the Sony A95K, mainly thanks to its dynamic tone mapping which managed to recover more bright highlight detail than other OLEDs in this challenging scene from the Mac without sacrificing significant brightness. The LG G2 came second with 3.37 points, helped by its customizable HDR10 tone curve for 1000 nit and 4000 nit movies, in theory, the Samsung S35B should have done better due to its highest peak brightness and most relaxed ABL, but the Korean manufacturer's strategy of tone mapping based on Max MDL instead of MaxCL metadata caused some movies in a 4000 nit container to look paradoxically dimmer than other OLEDs. Next, motion. The judging panel first voted on 24fps motion handling with 4.4 or 5.5 pulldown, but no smoothing engaged to avoid so opera effect or SOE, then assessed 50hz motion by watching some studio TV programs, as well as football with motion interpolation enabled using optimized settings on all televisions. 
After the votes were counted, the Samsung S95B and the Sony A95K topped the motion category with an average of 3.6 points each. To assess video processing, the judges first voted on the TV's 10-bit gradation using these snippets containing the sky and the ocean from the 4K Blu-rays of Kingsman and the Mac respectively. Upscaling quality was judged based on this low bitrate recording from ITV3SD, and finally compression handling was compared using this bit-staffed footage from the final season of Game of Thrones. With smooth gradation decontouring filter engaged on the television if available. The Sony A95K reigned supreme in this video processing category, coming top with 3.55 points, while in second place was the Samsung S35B with 3.29 points. Since QD OLEDs exhibited less noise and flashing artifacts than WRGB OLEDs, thanks to the absence of white subpixels. In the next category, the judging panel voted on dark and bright uniformity separately using a slow panning shot in this scene from Star Trek Beyond, as well as some football broadcast. The Panasonic LZ2000 and the Samsung S95B were joined first with 4.44 points, while the LG G2 and the Sony A95K lost out in this category due to some minor dark uniformity issues on our retail sample. To judge the next category, which was bright room performance, I opened the skylight blinds to let natural sunlight fill the room, then played some football and daytime TV programs on the televisions which were switched to day mode, calibrated to their respective highest light output without negatively affecting color and gamma accuracy. Besides light output, ambient contrast and anti-glare properties, the judges were also asked to pay attention to luminance stability namely how quickly and severely each OLED TV dimmed its screen in response to static elements such as the scoreboard when watching football. The QD OLED TVs took this bright room category, with the Samsung S95B and the Sony A95K collecting an average of 3.69 points each from the judges. To crown the best home cinema TV of 2022, we added up the scores for attributes which are important for watching high-quality 4K HDR movies in a dimly lit room, such as black level and shadow detail, color accuracy, HDR performance, 24p motion handling, and dark uniformity. The winner was the Panasonic LZ2000 with 14.33 points, beating the Sony A95K which received 13.92 points to the title of Best Home Cinema TV of 2022. Obviously, not everyone will be watching pristine quality content in a dark room all the time, so we also have an award for the best living room TV, which does well with a combination of heavily compressed material and sports, in a bright room if necessary. We totted up the scores for video processing, 50Hz motion, screen uniformity, and also bright room performance, and the best living room TV of 2022 was the Sony N85K with 15.38 points, followed by the Samsung S95B with 14.44 points. Finally, the overall best TV of 2022. But before that, I would like to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic started, some streaming providers including Netflix have throttled the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. You can also get more content that's not available in your region. Perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you will get 83% off, as well as 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay. After adding all the scores in all 7 categories, I can announce that the best TV of 2022 in our annual TV shootout is the Sony A95K with 25.26 points. The Panasonic LZ2000 was the runner-up, 
having accumulated 24.54 points. Compared to last year's Sony A90J, the Bravia A95K manifested no near black flashing artifacts, as well as delivered higher peak brightness and color luminance thanks to the use of a new QD OLED panel from Samsung Display. Together with Sony's traditional video processing strengths, especially in gradation, these improvements allowed the Sony A95K to win the Best TV of 2022 award in our annual TV shootout. So many congratulations to Sony for retaining the crown previously held by the A90J last year. Remember, this shootout is only intended as a guide. The fact that we tested so many different categories is to provide a point of reference for your specific use case. For example, if a substantial portion of content you watch is still low bitrate with heavy compression, choose the Sony A95K. If you like to watch movies in the most accurate manner possible, get a Panasonic OLED. But if it is not available in your country, go with the Sony. If value for money is an important factor in your purchase decision, then the LG G2 and the Samsung S95B are also excellent TVs in their own right. Some of you may have noticed that gaming was not evaluated in this year's shootout. There are three reasons. 1. The judges were from the TV and film production background rather than the gaming industry. 2. There is no 5-way HDMI 2.1 splitter that we could buy on the market yet for doing side-by-side -side comparisons with reference to the mastering monitor. And 3. Each television would need a different set of HGIG calibration values on the console due to different HGIG implementation and clipping points. In no particular order, I would like to thank the crew at Fullwell73 who let us use their outstanding facility and ISO CG3146 dual-layer LCD mastering monitor for the shootout. It is important to stress that the voted results neither represent the opinions or views of the company nor do they constitute the endorsement of any individual TV brand, since the judges didn't even know which TV was which throughout the voting process. Thanks also to Maciek Koper, a professional calibrator who flew in from Poland to help me calibrate these four OLED televisions, perceptually matched to the dual-layer LCD mastering monitor. Thanks to CYP Europe for loaning an 8-way HDMI splitter for the shootout, and HDMI 2.1 cable manufacturer Zeskit for supplying all the HDMI cables used in this event. I continue to use the company's flagship Zeskit Maya series, as well as the slimmer and more flexible Zeskit Lite series of certified HDMI 2.1 cables in my in-depth TV testing and side-by-side -side comparisons, and they have never failed me. Last but not least, Thanks to UK electrical retailer Campton Moore for supplying the TVs and organizing the annual shootout. If you would like to purchase a new television, including the calibrated units we used at the shootout, please support Campton Moore by considering buying from them. Call 0113 244 and ask for store manager David Connor. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was that after I reset the TVs to out-of-the-box filmmaker mode to compare out-of-the-box color accuracy, I had to manually go into each TV to switch off one hidden setting that's so detrimental to picture quality that it needed to be disabled, otherwise the comparison would be useless. To find out what this hidden setting is and how to disable it on your TV to improve picture quality, please go watch my instruction video by clicking here.